Hey everyone, it's Phil here. Just a real quick intro to today's video examining the big J-O from, I think he's from Houston, isn't he? Sounds like a Texan. Look, anyway, I may have got that wrong, but it's the big Joel and I didn't even get to the sermon. Like this is the first time I've really looked at anything from Joel and I, I take it from when he first comes on the platform in all of his you know golden tooth glory or pure white ivory tooth glory I guess you might say um, and the resonance of his hairspray just swept over the auditorium I don't even get to the sermon there's so much going on I'll try and wrap up with a comment at the end as well but stick with me there's enough in what I uncovered just looking at how he works the crowd leading up to his message that is very concerning and very disturbing. Sit tight, buckle up. I think you're going to get something good out of this. Please let us know in the comments. Hey folks, welcome to another Hit The Bar. Down Under Hit The Bar basically means hit the space bar, right? Uh, so that we can watch uh, Christian messages and uh, hit that bar if we want to stop them. But what I try to do here, and thanks to the Kozars for this great idea of giving message slash sermon reviews so that we can learn what's actually going on in some of these messages that we watch is um is, is basically pause pause a message you don't get to do that really do you while you're a christian sitting in a pew chair seat whatever wheelchair if you happen to be in one of those and watching a live sermon it just goes over you and it's very rare that you get the time to critically analyze in a good way what's going on hi everyone my name's Phil. I'm from the No Apologies team in Australia. Uh, Steve is still in Germany at the moment. Harvey, Ash and Craig are busy doing a few other projects. So you get me today. We're going to have some fun. We're going to be looking at Lakewood Church, Joel Osteen, the big cheese himself, the uh, dentist's dream, I think we might call him. I've got my biblically approved beverage of choice. I hope you've got something as well. Um, I just thought, why not Why not give Joel a bit of a, a whirl? I've heard people talk about him in different um, spheres uh, as being one of the best or one of the worst, depending upon your understanding of what he's doing and what the Bible says to do. So this is my chance. First time I've ever reviewed Joel and I want to hear what's going on. Now, I haven't heard this sermon. So where my hit the bars are a bit different to other folks is that I, I don't pre-watch them and, tr and, and then try and layer the scriptures in that I think should go there. I'm, I'm trying to put myself in a live experience situation, a um, bit of a training ground really, so that I can actually hear what's going on live and, and, and then just say, well, what, what do I remember from my own Bible studies to help me understand what's going on here? Because it's very easy to be persuaded by good talkers with great sound systems and an awesome band and terrific lights and charisma and pizzazz. But, um, but really, uh, you know, the Bible tells us to watch our doctrine closely. And I reminded us in the last video that you're the only one who can watch your, your doctrine closely. So that's pointing back at me as well. You're the only one who can watch your doctrine closely so this is a way of doing that and, and maybe you'll find this really interesting welcome big shout out to all the campuses out there whoever you are wherever you're from welcome in this worldwide uh, web of um, uh, connected let's say connected believers and I've come a long way in the last five years or so in my biblical understanding um, I started no apologies as an apologetics group with Steve and, and Dr. Harvey probably about four or five years ago now out of the need where I thought and we were all in charismatic churches, Pentecostal churches at that stage um, and and I just felt a need as believers to uh, have more equipping for the believers than what I was seeing happening on a you know a possible on a Sunday morning you know big churches single message people in Bible study groups and or not, who knows, that sort of thing. And, and so it was impressed upon me to see if we could, to some degree, plug that gap and help strengthen believers with basic apologetics. Um, and not all of us are still with that uh, 
Pentecostal slash charismatic church we were a part of. Uh, Steve's moved on, I've moved on, um, and mostly I would say for um, biblical reasons. So I'm going to go back into that world again and uh, look at Joel and uh, see what he's got to offer for us today. I hope you're out there with your uh, Bible at the ready. Um, if you've got comments, put them in the chat pod uh, over on the right hand side. If you are watching live in the premiere or down below in the comments, if that's where you are uh, watching this a bit later, the most comments are really welcome. Um, and please always remember to give it a, a thumbs up, um, subscribe and ring that bell. These things all help you find out when the next video is coming and uh, also uh, they help that YouTube algorithm and, and help this grow. So if you're keen for this sort of work to, to grow, uh, I say it every week when I do these, I'm just a nunce with a Bible and I've got the uh, Gateway Bible here that I'm going to be using, Bible Gateway, sorry. And um, what we'll see is it, I'll just drag it backwards and forwards like this. So that's the only tool I'm using. I'm um, not a, while I read the Bible each day and, and try to study, um, I'm not a scholar, never claim that fame. So the risk warning is that you're just watching one believer who's learning and doing this stuff and trying to practice by encouraging other Christians to do the same thing in this cycle of ongoing learning. What am I hearing? Does it line up with what I understand? If I miss anything, um, that's because I'm a one man show here at the moment. The other boys are away. Uh, but also you're, you're out there. Pop your ideas in. Tell me where I've missed stuff. Tell me where I've got stuff right. Um, I don't want to be critical of Joel. I've heard people say very positive and very disparaging things about him. Um, and uh, I want to critique his message. Now, I understand um, I've been in adult education for a long time. A message is the whole package. It's not just the words that are said. It's the environment that it's set in. It's the context that it's communicated from, that includes budgets, that includes assumptions, that includes all sorts of things. So I'm just about to press the start bar and get going. One thing I will let you know is they've just finished a very, very well polished song, music song. I won't call it a worship song, um, but it was pretty much a song that was revving people up emotionally um, and spiritually to hang on for their, their miracle. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking God um, for his intervention, his miracles, healing, uh, finances to help overcome debt, whatever it may be. But there, you know, from what I can see in scripture, there's never a guarantee of those sort of things. Otherwise, they wouldn't be miracles, would they? Uh, so, um, look, these people are already primed, is what I'm saying. We're coming in. They have just been clapping, singing, hollering in a great southern kind of way. And getting stuck into it so let's see what happens with Joel. Lord God we love you today Lord I thank you as we're worshiping you that every chain that's tried to stop us has been broken today. Lord I thank you that you're doing what only you can do. Lord our eyes are upon you today. I thank you that chains of depression have been broken, chains of anxiety, fear, addiction, sicknesses, trouble at work, home and our finances. Lord, I thank you today is a breakthrough day. Well, we're into a really interesting, if this is a prayer, um, set of statements. It's kind of like a catechism to some degree, isn't it? And what if it's not a breakthrough day? You're here, you're desperate. You're not asking God for anything. You're, you're making all these positive confession statements um, that don't line up with what scripture tells us to begin with necessarily. Uh, it's all me, me, me at the moment. Uh, Lord, I thank you that you're at work behind the scenes even right now. Lord, we turn our attention to you. We may have some big obstacles, but we know you're a big God. That you being for us is more than the world being against us. So Lord, as we start off the- Well, that's a scripture that's dropped out of context there. Apparently our problems are the things that means God is for us, who can be against us. But that's actually a, a quote, if I understand it right, um, about salvation. Let's see if I drum this up over here. Who can be against us? Romans 8, that's right, more than conquerors. 
So if we have to look back at this in a little bit of context, um, Romans 8, 31 to 39, what shall I say then? What, shall that, what then shall we say in response to these things? Well, I actually want to read what these things are because it says here, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son for our what? For our salvation, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Well, this sounds very good unless I find out what's going on before that. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. That sounds like our standing before God in our sin or salvation. Um, let's go back just a little bit there and see what's going on. I want to find out what those things were. So if I go back to Romans one just sorry just to get me going we're starting life through the spirit therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in jesus christ okay so we are talking about our sin and our sin position and i'm actually reading from i think niv as the version here we're talking about those who live according and i'm just scanning so i'm just trying to get ideas and get them quickly here this may not be as effective as a roseboro way of doing things but you get where i'm coming from those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires but those who live according to the spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desires so scanning down what has anything changed yet you however are not in the realm of the flesh but in the realm of the spirit if indeed the spirit of god lives in you so it's talking about us being moved into a new standing with god it's all about Christ. It's all about Christ. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, if you, but if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. So, present suffering, future glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed to us. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time, not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? Okay, so we're talking about our new life in Christ here. In the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans, and he who searches our hearts knows the minds of the Spirit, that would, you know, that would be God, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. We know that in all things God works for the good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose, so God's got to call you first, for those who God foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and those he predestined he also called, those he called he also justified, those he justified he also glorified. Here's where we start. What then shall we say in response to these things? In response to these things. So these things there were about our living new life in the spirit about being called by god being um, set apart justified sanctified and and now this is if god is for us who can be against us so well, already as i see where joel's going with his his mantra that he's praying into people um he's already misusing a key scripture well people are already wound up emotionally with great expectations some with in, in incredible need and they're coming to the expert and even before he starts preaching he's conditioning people through that big atmosphere through that huge budget through the expectation that's been built up along the way much in the way that you might see magicians do things they they direct people's attention in particular ways Joel the showman has He's running the show. Have you seen the greatest show on earth? I think it's here. This new week, we say it publicly that you're our Lord, yes. our God, yes. our Savior. Make us and mold us into who you want us to be. Yes. Lord, I thank you that you're going before us right now, mm -hmm. making crooked places straight. 
opening right doors, closing wrong doors, bringing the right people across our path, and weeding out those that shouldn't be there. Lord, I ask that... Mm, that's almost a slippery kind of set of statements there. To what end? He starts very well, like Joel has talked about us being transformed to be like Christ. I'm on board with that. But I think there's a lot more going on here, straight away. The slickness of all of this um, just sets a little old country boy like me back on his heels, wondering who's selling something behind the shed. You'd give us all wisdom to make great decisions this week. Amen. I think That's that our good. spiritual ears and eyes are open, sensitive, and responsive to your voice. Lord, you said when we... Our spiritual eyes and ears open, sensitive to the response, to be responsive to your voice. So does he mean the Bible? Or am I expecting to hear whispers in my ears? Um, audible, inaudible, in my head, voices in my head. Is that is that what he's saying? He's saying a lot of things, they're not referencing scripture. And there's a lot of assumption going on here. And assumption is a a very dangerous thing when you're talking about people's lives and people's money, particularly their eternal life. I ask you to freely give wisdom, that we yes. know the best choice every time. Yes, that's Lord, it. Lord, I thank you that you're making the path clear for us. And what's with the music? This is just on, isn't it? There's no gap, there's no space. The emotions of these folks are being well massaged incredibly. And I mean, I know they've all come along to hear Joel speak. He's, he's a good looking fella. He's got his act together. And perhaps it is an act. Um, I think, I genuinely think he believes what he's, he's selling. Um, but there's there's quite a lot of stuff here already that's very um, very me centered and very not Christ centered. Although Christ is in some of the stuff that he's saying, he's talking about us being transformed. But then there's this next part from there. Lord, for those of us, we've all made mistakes. Lord, we've made sins. Have we made sins, Joel? Wrong turns. I think, you, Lord, your mercy is bigger than any mistake. Yes, true. To Absolutely. not hold in our mistakes against us, that you can still get us to where we're supposed to be. I'm never, under sh never understanding these, this sort of mm, this sort of language where he's saying where we're supposed to be. Now that it means God does have a plan for us, but at the moment He's talked about removing our what we see as our troubles and our struggles, but um, what does it say in the way back in the book of Job? It, it, shall we not accept both good and trouble from the Lord? Uh, he's saying anything that gets in our way as an obstacle needs to be removed. I know we would like that and we can pray, Lord, if it's your will. But there's a lot of assumption that only good things are God's will. And that's not that's not the case. So, Lord, like we're singing, we're expecting your goodness this week. Yes, you we're will get it. We're expecting right doors to open. We're expecting negative situations around. Oh, are we? So, right in whose perspective? Negative in whose perspective? We're not really wanting God's will, are we? At this stage, we're wanting what we want. To turn around, okay. Lord, we know you're a good God. He is. Our faith is in you today. Lord, help us to believe. Lord, I, I lift up all those that are fighting uh, battles in their health, those that couldn't make it, in the hospitals, not feeling well. Lord, you said you'd restore health back to your people. Where did he say that, Joel? Where did he say that? What are you referencing biblically? When he said something, it's going to be in scripture. I don't know any scripture that says he will be restoring health back to his people. And, you know... This has got some desperate people who will be clinging on to this. If God has said that, they would want God to come through. Get ready for big disappointments, folks. Lord, right now I speak healing over all those that... Is that an incantation? I speak healing? Lord, I thank you that the tide of the battle is beginning to turn in their health today. That everything about our body is getting better. Says who? Says who? That's a lie. That's an absolute lie. It's an incantation, or it's a lie. Our joints, ligaments, bones, memory, blood, tissue, cell. We can ask God to do that for us, but aging is a natural part of life. We are born, we grow, but we're in a state in a sinful world where things don't evolve. They actually 
devolve. Things break down. We can hold them off for a while with good exercise and good diet and uh, good habits. Those sorts of things can, can help, but you can't stop it. It's inevitable. Uh, you're going to die someday. And some of the ways we die are not very nice at all. Not very nice. Lord, I think that with long life you will satisfy us. Uh, that's a reference to a scripture. Lord, I thank you for doing it even now that your people feel strength and healing and wholeness, that we will run and not be weary, walk and not faint, like Isaiah declared in Jesus' name. Well, he's got a fair bit of a grab bag of, of things going on there, doesn't he? You know, um, let's see, what's he talking about there? Uh, I, I've got to pull some of those in just to see. I will, they will run and not gr grow weary. I said, yeah, Isaiah. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint that's great and and we do and we do renew our strength but what we're talking about when we look at the rest of scripture with isaiah 40 31 just pulled out of context is that in the new testament we also find scriptures that that tell us that whether we're in a high position or in a low position um, we should be thankful to the lord for where he has placed us um, and when Joel is using these sorts of scriptures just as an incantation to get people going, he he's not praying, he's not asking, he's um he's he's making huge. Oh, I I bless thee, not I even bless thee. Who is Joel? Is he the right hand of God to be doing this kind of dubbing, dubbing of health on people? For what reason? Oh, mm, interesting. Lord, not just physically, but I lift up those that are in tough times. Those that have gone through loss, they're hurting. Father, you said you're close to the brokenhearted. Yes. That you're a very yes. present help in times of trouble. Yes. So, Father, I ask that they'd feel your presence right now. Let them know that we are wrapping our arms around them by faith in prayer. And Lord, I think that this situation will pass, that it's not the end, but it's really a new beginning. How does he know that? How does he know? You know, right up to Job chapter 37, he doesn't know that chapter 38 is coming. He's just in the midst of it. And, and, and not every situation ends in good that we would think of. Uh, sorry, it will be good eventually because it's uh, the way God calls and creates and, and moves situation by, situations by his hand of providence. Absolutely good from God's perspective, but I don't mean it won't be necessarily comfortable or desirable from a human fleshly point of view. And I hear where Joel's coming from on these things. He's equating Christianity to being the recipients of all good things. Once you're a Christian, this should be expected of you. That's not, that's not going to happen. He's, he's made these huge product claims in the name of God. He hasn't even started preaching yet. He's conditioning people as an expert communicator. They've gone through, I want my miracle song. I want my miracle. They are drummed up. The show is big. The show is professional. It's credible. It's believable. Out steps in the end of that music, the world's greatest showman possibly. And he starts declaring all these things over people as if he has spiritual super connection to God to be able to be like the priests of old who would declare a blessing over people. Now, it's good to, to bless people, but part of that is we request things as Christians of God. We can never demand them. We don't have anything particular that we can impart. I don't, I don't believe. I don't know. I could be wrong. Put it in the chat pot if I'm, I'm wrong. But yeah, I just, I just don't know. He sounds to, to me like an incredible, persuasive salesman but what is he selling eventually people if it doesn't work for them are going to get massive disappointment in god and he has not sold yet the god of the bible it's not what i um, shouldn't, shouldn't ever sell god um but he's not communicating true statements 
about what our God in the Bible tells us about himself and what he will do. It's only all positive, hopeful declaration. That you're still in control. You said weeping endures for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. So Lord, I thank you for the joy that's on the way. I speak fresh vision, fresh anointing, fresh favor, new beginnings. But it's all situational. Look, he said some things and added things onto it. So some things that are right, if you would bring the scripture out, that would be helpful. But I know it's, it's a prayer. So it's, you know, I don't want to get just too critical on that. But he's brought that out as a foundation and people go, yeah, that's biblical. And then he's added this other stuff to it. That it's going to all be good. It's going to always work out. Where's my stress ball? I don't have it. I need to use this already. Oh my gosh. Wow. This, uh, this is prosperity stuff, but not in rags. This is like howdy doody with a million dollars in his teeth. In Jesus' name. Lord, thank no, you. No, don't doing. do that in Jesus' Lord, name. Lord, you've done great things in the past, but we believe the best is still yet to come. That 2022 won't be a get by year, but a bountiful year, a faith filled, favor filled year. That we are victors and never victims. In Jesus' name. And if you receive it, can you say amen today? Wow. What a pitch. What a pitch. He's pulled, again, other scriptures out, other big coaching, mentoring statements, big influential TED Talk type communicator stuff. I'm flummoxed. I'm not surprised. I need some beverage of choice. Oh, wow. Why doesn't coffee calm me down? Where do you go with that? We haven't even started the message yet. But can you see how his message is going to take root in people? They are conditioned, like good soil conditioner has been put on them. And what do you put onto soil to really condition soil, mm? to make it receptive to a message, to what's being planted in that soil? Mm? Manure, perhaps that's what he's been sowing here. Look, it, I don't know why he would do that. I don't know why a Christian teacher, I don't know, you can't call him a pastor, look at this, it's a show. You can't possibly pastor that many people. So I don't think this is a church, even though they say it's a church. I, I just think it's um, I think it's a, a show, it's a program that, that's got Christianity washed all the way through it to some degree. And itching ears are being tickled, as it says in scripture. Probably weak people have been drawn aside to be sold this false bill of goods and they've got they're going to have every right in a few years to be very angry now i know for some people the situations will turn around they will get a job again they will get healing in their body something will come through that they didn't expect sure but what about the masses of other people who didn't get those things that he's advertising for god strike one don't say god said these things when god didn't say these things and two He's not really praying. Oh, not that much. I, I couldn't really say what he was doing. He was kind of praying to God and kind of making these sweeping statements about how good life is going to be, as if just by saying them, it's going to happen. Now, that is very classic. You know, name it and claim it, word faith, new apostolic reformation type stuff, all sandwiching together in the most clean-cut, socially acceptable, Richie Cunningham kind of way with a lot of Neil Diamond thrown in there. And the music's still going on. It's just astounding. We're going to make this declaration of faith. We do it every service. This is what God says about you. Not just words, not just being hopeful. This is speaking faith into your future. Come on, let's... Oh, oh, okay, so this is what God says about us. I think I've, I think I've heard him do this before. I think I'm unimpressed. Um, I doubt that we're going to get the biblical references for it. Probably there's enough in here for the Roseboroughs just in the declaration to spend time in, you know, their fantastic Accordance Bible app, which I do have a copy of, um, and, and really tear it apart because I think it's going to be something sandwiched together out of context based on what I've seen so far. 
Let's go give it a rating. Say it like you mean it. Ready? Did he just say, say it like you mean it? Oh, my hat. This guy is a coach. I am blessed. Prosperous. No, I'm not prosperous. That's not necessarily something. Prosperous, redeemed, forgiven, healthy. With no guarantee of health. Whole, talented, creative, confident, secure, disciplined, focused, prepared, qualified, motivated, valuable, free, determined, equipped, empowered, anointed, accepted, and approved. Not average, not mediocre. I am a child of the Most High God. I will become all I was created to be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, we are a super class of Christian. I get it. We wear our underpants on the outside of our trousers and put a big S on our t-shirts for sucker. That's, that's not Christianity. That's not even Biblical Judaism. That's just New Age incantationism with some Bible words thrown over it and Jesus' name stuck on it. That's a lie. That's an absolute lie. He's pulled out some parts, mixed it with flesh tickling, gee, wouldn't it be good if, as if we are meant to be prosperous, we are meant to be healed. I've never sat through that before, not really, and I am flabbergasted. The amount of social conditioning that has just been seen is cult-like. It's a very happy cult. It's a very friendly cult. I'm imagining there's a lot of credit cards and checkbooks that are really open to this guy because he's telling people what they want, which is, you're now a believer, you could have been for 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years. And I'm not sure what kind of believer you would be if that was the case, whether you would just be saved or whether you'd just be someone who's into moral, theistic. No, no I've got that word wrong again. Oh, help me out, guys. Moral. Behavior. No. Oh, you know it. It's about just being good people with God's name smacked on the outside of it. I told you, I'm a bit of a nunce. I'm not very smart because for years I suffered with ecclesiogenic neurosis and now I'm pouring it out on you. This was terrible. This is this is not even the sermon yet. We sk wow. Just wow. The power of this. Imagine if this guy actually preached the gospel. That would be stunning. But then what did Paul say? You know, we didn't come with fancy words, but with as, as apostles, we didn't come with great speech. I'm not great at speech. I, I came with uh, just, you know, the gospel, the power of the gospel for salvation. And what's Joel coming with? Everything's going to be all right. Hey, man, don't worry about the thing. Every little thing's going to be all right. That was sort of Bungara met Rasta there. Sorry about that. Ooh, cultural appropriation gone wrong. Let's see if he actually starts to teach and preach a message. I think I need um, more of my biblically approved beverage of choice. Ho, 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 ho. I think Satan does his best work in churches, according to scripture. I think we're about to see some of it. You sound awesome today. I love all of that statement, but I, I'm just thinking about that last phrase that we're going to become all God's created us to be. In other words, you know, sometimes you can think, well, Joel Gosling. Pardon my baklava. Self-actualization. With God's name on it. God's here. Just for us. That's it. And we're saying everything God's created me to be. So if we're meant to be just a tip truck driver, I can't be very good. If you're meant to be just a janitor, that's not very good. You're not being all you're created to be. This is so contrary to scripture. It's been good to me. I've had a good life, but I bet you, have. you wouldn't be alive unless God has something greater in your future.
says no biblical text ever. Always wanted to say that. Thanks, Chris. No. No. Wrong. False. Lie. Somebody needs what you have. Well, at the moment, I've got heart disease, cancer, high blood pressure, depression and anxiety, a few little scratchy spots from time to time which we don't talk about in public. Do you think somebody needs that? Mm. So he's making this kind of loopy biblical case of you're going to get better so that you can pass it on to other people. Whereabouts is um, when I am weak, then he is strong. Let's just see what the scripture says about that. Then I am weak. Then. I'm sure. Maybe that's not the best way to to search it, because I'm not very good at these sort of things, you've got to understand. Okay, come with me, we'll do another tab here. When he, I am weak, God is strong. Scripture. I know some of you are already quoting this, you've already found it. 2 Corinthians 12.10. Now let's find that, 2 Corinthians 12.10. Yeah, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. There's more to it than that. So this is... Oh, I don't want to read that in all those translations. Let's just read the full chapter. I must go on boasting, although there's nothing to be gained, or I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man, in Christ, who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. So that's Paul talking about his experience, we believe, about himself being up there in heaven and not able to talk about it. Hello, all you new apostles who are allowed to go up and down from heaven every day and tell stories about it. It's not in the Bible to do that, but I digress. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But if I, but I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. So Paul doesn't say much about himself, because he doesn't want people thinking too much about himself. How's that in the light of Joel's self-aggrandizement going on there? Or because of these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh... Uh, that's where it is. I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. So he asked, God, will you please, rather than declaring and decreeing and doing all this kind of, I am blessed, I am healed, I am strong, I am prosperous. He's saying, Lord, please take it away. And God said, no. He said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So God said to him, the apostle, quote, unquote, God, my grace is sufficient for you. Whatever your situation, my grace is sufficient. For my power is made perfect in weakness. That's absolutely the opposite of what Joel is selling. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is nothing like what Joel has said just in his first few minutes. I don't think we'll be here long in this message because this guy is preaching the opposite of what the scriptures tell us. That is an anti-Christian message wrapped up in toothpaste, bubblegum and hairspray and a multi-million dollar budget. Somebody needs your love. Somebody needs your smile. Somebody needs your encouragement. True. If you Fine. were done, God Great. would have taken you to heaven. 
The fact that you have breath to breathe means there's something amazing up in front of you. No, it doesn't have why don't to be we amazing. Serve our gifts and say, no, I'm not going to make it 80 percent, 90 percent. We're going to make it 100 percent. Become all God's created us to be. There's this continual level of self-actualization, this thread of I'm not enough as I am. I can't just be saved. I need to be made into something more. But there's no mortifying of the flesh, as the old school preachers used to say. There's no getting rid of sin. It's just personal development, personal aggrandizement. I need to be big so that I can bless other people. Gee, doesn't that sound great? Doesn't that sound so humble and nice? Oh, pat myself on the back. I'm only this wealthy, so I can give it away. Wow, this stuff is insidious. And then sometimes you think, well, you know what? I've had bad breaks. You know what? This didn't work out. I'm dealing with this sickness or, you know, this relationship didn't work out. But you know what? God saw everything that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can see where this is going. This Bit of a one-trick pony by the sound of things here. You know, he, he has beauty for the ashes. God has healing for the sickness. God knows how to turn things around. One touch of God's favor can turn any situation around. So He's a bumper sticker king, isn't he? That's what this is. It's a series of bumper stickers. There's not a Bible insight. There's Bible-sounding things for those who've read their scriptures. There's the odd biblical phrase that's been ripped out and pulled in, the biblical truth that's been taken out of the ether and then put forward to say here's something good about God that means something's going to be good for you let's be believers and not doubt it. I think a big part of it is in our own mind we kind of get complacent well you know this is good enough or I can learn to live with this addiction or hey man if I can just make it to the pandemic years and the after the pandemic but no you got to stir your faith up God I'm expecting some new doors to open I'm expecting to have a bountiful 2022. Well, he will. The audience is clapping and that's where he gets his money from. That and his books, which I'm sure the audience and many other people sell. Like if you want someone to tell you how good you are, how good you can be, he's your man and you'll give him your money. What is it? Shut up, Joel. Shut up and take my money. Tell me how good it is and put God's name on it. Tell me how good I am and put God's name all over it. Not to give by 2022. That's for somebody else. God has a bountiful 2022 for you. A and how do you just get there, Joel? Do you have to be a super A-class Christian to know what this is? Like, what's going on? Prosperous, faith-filled, favor-filled, productive 2022. If God's doing that, wouldn't that just all happen? To us, wouldn't that be the story of Christians from 33 AD onwards? Would, wouldn't that be the case? Wouldn't we see that in the scriptures? In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't put Jesus' All right, name I'll take this. a moment to pray, guys. He's going to pray again? I'm not sure what that was before. So if you need prayer, anybody here in this building, there'll be a prayer partner at the front of your section and at the back, all over the building, even up top. There I don't think I can spend time looking for his prayers. Let's see if I can skip forward to the message. Oh no, there's a bit of her saying something, a bit of him saying something, a bit of music. I wonder if that's where the message actually kicks off, right there. You said, well, Joel, nothing happened. My back's still hurting. Still got this problem. You got to know in the unseen realm, things have changed in your favor. God. So they did some prayers, I think. I just skipped over them and the ads and various, and sang another song. So Joel's done the rev up and the build up and kept it moving along and I'm sure he's got some money out of people by now and now he's telling us that if you didn't get that healing that you wanted in your back or here about the about that wherever it may be in the spirit realm it's changed so you just wait your turn and it will come to you um, well we'll see won't we Joel um, but nothing in the scripture tells us that the spirit realm things happen automatically and then the earthly realm things have to take a little bit of time for that to come through just this is, this is just pure salesmanship nothing more God is in control yes he he's is. going to bring about what he promised hey thanks for being here so there's all the assumptions he's going to bring about what he promised yes he will be sure of that Joel be sure as a false teacher 
which I have no qualms in calling you a false biblical teacher because you handle the Bible badly and you have you have been teaching you just haven't been teaching in a sermon yet but you've been teaching and you've been teaching things in the name of God that are not what God says you you are either very badly misled yourself or you are an intentional liar and you need to repent now I'm saying that to Joel in the camera I know Joel will never see this but I hope I pray for him I pray for God's mercy on him and that he changes and he repents but then again Joel Osteen just could be part of God's judgment on America and on the Christian church around the world because we deserve this kind of stuff if we've ignored God and his holiness and his commands and the right teaching of his scriptures and thinking that these things are, you know the Christian life is all about us and we lose the joy of our salvation or don't even know the joy of our salvation which I'm sure I really didn't for so many years in my Christian life no one really taught me how deep the gospel goes it was just always assumed and then so the gospel was easily confused we deserve people like Joel Osteen who will just pat us on the back tickle our itching ears take our money shear the sheep and just send us back out into the you know wherever for slaughter because we don't deserve anything else he's terrible and we haven't even started, heard him teach a proper message yet this has all been just in the wind up the build up the setup the showmanship exquisite showmanship of this unbelievable Guys, all the songs that we're singing today are from Lakewood Music, our homegrown group right here. A lot of these, a lot of these young people have been raised right here in Lakewood, been writing music, writing songs. We're so proud of them. I love that song, Do What Only You Can Do. You know, God, we're ready for a miracle. Do something great. Well, they put out a new project, a new album, Lakewood Music. It's called Shout. It's really fantastic. So I was going to let them take a few minutes today. and let So let's hear the new song. We won't hear the new song. We'll come back to this in a little bit. It's around this point in the Joel Osteen video that I realized that's enough for one day. I said to myself, we'll come back to tackle the rest of Joel's actual message, sermon, preach, whatever, in the next video. Hello everybody, thanks for joining me. That was just Joel doing his warm-up. He hasn't even really got to the message yet, so if this video makes it all the way through the YouTube censorship algorithm and the copyright algorithms, then we'll be on with Joel in another video to actually look at what he says. I really don't want to take him out of context. I, like I said, I don't know Joel. He doesn't know me. No reason he should ever watch this. Um, but I do want to be genuine, and I do want to actually look at what he gets to say. Now, we've already seen a lot of what he says. He's given us a lot of Joel's theology in the situation, in the environment that he's created, the atmosphere, if you like that kind of word, and I don't. But we'll see. So hang in there. Um, again, thanks for joining us. I'm glad you're here. Hopefully you find these things helpful. If you do, uh, please like the video, subscribe, hit that button, share with friends on your social media if you like doing that sort of thing. Help us get the channel to grow so we can get this sort of teaching and help out to other people who you think might benefit from learning how to hit the bar themselves. And they can stop and critically evaluate what people are saying in Christian sermons in the name of Christ and see how it lines up to just for a layman to the Word of God in the Bible. God bless you all, each and every one. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. All right. Toodaloo.